Right. I'm Ben Scott, and I'm leading the development of the museum's uh, data portal, which is going to sit at data.nhm.ac.uk. Um, as you've been hearing today, the museum has a vast data heritage and is generating more and more data each year, especially with like the iCollections initiative and digitization processes we're putting in place. But only a fraction of this is made available online at the moment. Most of it just ends up sitting on someone's hard drive and of little use beyond the team producing it. We want to change this and provide a single online access point to all of this data. And as a public institution, this is a really important task. Wherever possible, we should try and allow easy and open access to all of our publicly funded research data. And beyond that, the more open we are and the greater data access we provide, the more impact our research can have. Open access is good for researchers too, helping them publicize their research and make a name for themselves. And every data set on the data portal will have a DOI, so everyone will be properly credited for their work. Also, many funding bodies nowadays require researchers to release their data as open access, and we need to ensure that we have the infrastructure in place to support this. We're building the data portal using a tool called CCAN. It's an open source Python application built by the Open Knowledge Foundation, which is an institution promoting open data and open knowledge around the world. CCAN has been used by many of the biggest data portals over the past few years, including the UK government's own data.gov.uk, and in May this year, the US government rebuilt its data portal, data.gov, using CCAN. So there's huge momentum behind this software at the moment, which is why it's a great choice for the museum. Um, in the first phase of development, we'll be focusing primarily on specimen data from KEEMU. And as Daryl was talking about, we're getting a data export of all the core data from KEMU and passing this data into the data portal. Every week, we get an update from KEMU, allowing us to keep the data portal in sync with the core specimen database. Um, it's still early days, and we have a lot of data parsing and data processing to do. But we're already getting some very useful information from the system. Um, in fact, the globe uh, visualization you see here and on today's posters is based on the 400,000 geo-encoded records downloaded from KEMU. In the second phase of the project, uh, year two, we will open up the data portal so other data sets can be deposited. For example, from scratch pads, Herbcat, and the museum's, uh, maybe the museum's library catalog. We're also working with key data producers within the museum. For example, the uh, metagenomics team generate huge amounts of data, which will be uploaded to the data portal and reused and researched worldwide. Individual researchers will also be able to contribute their data sets. Just log in with your museum credentials fill in the required metadata fields and upload your data. And as I said before, every single data set will have its own DOI and can be properly cited. So you're not losing control of the data that you upload to the portal. At the front end, the data portal will have an interface for exploring all of the data sets. Um, so this is a screenshot of the uh, data.gov.uk site, which demonstrates many of the features. So you can browse and search, um, click through and view an individual data set. And then once you're inside the data set, you can view the metadata and explore the packages, the, the data within that data package. Every data package will have up to three views to explore the data. Tabular, just a table of the, stat of the um, data. Statistical, showing like sort of key stats about the data set. And geospatial. For example, you'll be able to view the museum's specimen data on a world map, applying facets to explore specimen occurrence across different species. Um, this example here is actually taken from the uh, Canadensis data portal, which contains biode biodiversity data from Canadian universities. Um, and it's using CartoDB, a similar technology we'll be using on the, uh, on the data portal. Um, the whole point of the data portal is to allow the sharing and reuse of data. By default, all data sets will be released under o an open Creative Commons license. The portal will also have a number of mechanisms to work with and share the data. There'll be an R-based analytical interface to explore the data. Also, the data portal will integrate with GBIF, delivering NHM specimen records to the GBIF network. Users will also be able to download the data from the portal in a reusable standard format. So for the KE specimen records, that will be as a Darwin, Darwin Core archive. And there will also be an API so the data can be integrated with other websites and services. But another exciting development of the project is we will make all of the information available as machine-readable RDF. How that works is, as a human, if you visit a data set or specimen page, you will see a page that's easy for you to read. But if a machine visits it, the data portal will return a page that the computer can read and understand as RDF triple data. And making our data available as RDF is the first step for us as a museum joining the world of open linked data. 
our information can then be interlinked and queried along with that of other data sources and institutions around the world. Um, so to conclude, the data portal will be the platform to deliver the museum's data in an open and linked format. And in doing so, it will help advance biodiversity knowledge worldwide, as well as furthering the impact of the museum and its researchers' work. And in keeping with the ambitions of this project, we are trying to run it in a completely open and responsive way. So all of our documentation is available on our wiki. And if you have any comments or feedback, please do get in touch and let me know. That's it. Thank you. Ben wins the prize for keeping the most within time. So I think we're going to have time for kind of maybe a couple of questions, but I'll try to push us on so that we can make up some of our lost time. Yes, Adrian. Just a quick question about versioning the data. Say you've got a copy of the data set, you upload it to the portal, you get a DRI of it, and then it gets worked on and changed and modified. So is that either a separate data set? Um, okay, the question, the question was, what about versioning data sets? Do different versions of data sets get different DOIs? Um, it, it depends how much it's changed. If the actual data contained, contained in the data set changes, no. I mean, there's four or five sort of key uh, metadata fields which shouldn't change as part of the uh, data site DOI standard. And as long as, um, as long as those don't change, then it's fine. We can, just have we can show how it's versioned and how it's changed over time, but we don't need to assign a different data site, do data site DOI. Any other questions? Okay, well, thanks very much, Ben. We'll 